This is the Sam Sorbo Show. The media has been her number one target in this. Without the media, uh, this wouldn't even be a contest. But the media has built her up. They've let her slide on every you know, indiscrepancy, on every lie, on every you know, DNC uh, you know, game trying to get Bernie Sanders out of the thing. I mean, if Republicans were doing that, they'd be warming up the gas chamber right now. All right, welcome back to the program. That comment from Donald Trump Jr. has sparked a new media outrage firestorm thing. Uh, and I've got response uh, that I'm going to play for you, but I'm joined now by Diana West, the author of American Betrayal and Death of the Grown-Up. Uh, and uh, you can find her at dianawest.net. Welcome to the program, Diana. Hey, welcome. Thank you. So the, I think the Trump campaign is trying to downplay this and saying, Warming up the gas chamber meant um, for a capital punishment here in the United States. But I think I think he's talking about the gas chambers. Uh, and frankly, I don't see the problem with that. Do you? Right. No, this is this is utterly, utterly insulting to our intelligence that we even have to sit and parse this. I mean, what if he said, they're getting the gulag ready, or they're getting the guillotine ready, or they're getting the gas chamber ready, or they're getting whatever it was that Paul Pot right. used. I mean, who cares? Uh, it, it, no, but the media, look, Diana, you, you and I, know. I both know that the, that the media can call Donald Trump a Nazi, and right. all of his supporters Nazis, deplorables, and irredeemables, that's okay. Yeah. Right. But for the other side to, to accuse them of Nazi-type behavior, that's just, uh, that's irredeemable and deplorable, right? Well, yes, it is. But, I mean, this, is, this depends entirely on sort of a weird postmodern kind of parsing where, where the sense of what he's saying has to be divorced from the mere phrase gas chamber. The, the right. whole sense of what he's talking about, it doesn't matter. It can be X, it can, uh, you know, it can, it, it can be a pop gun. It doesn't matter. But they're, because they're divorcing what he's talking about from the meaning, they try to just say, oh, gas chambers are on Donald Trump Jr.'s mind. So therefore, everyone who votes for Donald Trump must be a Nazi. I mean, the whole thing is so stupid. It's, it's going to pass. This will, this will pass. This is, this is a puff. Yeah. It's a way it's, of their coping. They don't want to deal with reality. They don't want to cover their candidate. They don't want to cover the election. This is just their way of dealing with the day. And we have to sort of start seeing them as codependents in <laughs> election meltdown. I love it. But I love it. It's like if you call me a Nazi, you must be a Nazi. That's it's 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 them but saying, I know you are, but what am I? It's exactly. It's but so it's funny. Even stupider because it doesn't even make sense. There's not any. It, the whole thing is absurd. But you yeah, know, they're, they're okay. Doing what they do, and you know, we just have to sort of let them do it and move on. So I saw you on. I believe it was Lou Dobbs talking about uh, Hillary Clinton's own Chappaquiddick. Would you like yeah. to elaborate on that? Well, I would. It's such an important story, and it, it really should be very widely known. Thank you for asking. It It concerns a case that she defended back in the 1970s. She was a legal defense um, for a rapist of a 12-year-old girl. And the reason I can say that with certainty, even though the man got off on rape charges, they ple she pled the, the charge of first-degree rape down to unlawful fondling, whereby the victim, however, required stitches in, in, in the rape area, was told by doctors she would not have children, and indeed did not. She's 54 years old now. And where she claims with great, this is Hillary, claims with glee on an audio tape that I really recommend listeners seek out. It's, it's linked in the piece at my website, dinowest.net, through the Hillary Chappaquiddick article and it's widely available. The Free Beacon unearthed it in 2014. It's an audio of Hillary Clinton bragging in the 1980s to a reporter about getting this, this criminal off, whereby she intimates that she's perfectly aware that he was lying because she says she got him to take a lie detector test, and she's never had faith in any past, important point, and she has never had faith in lie detector tests since, and she laughs. So this is a, an ugly admission of, of a defense lawyer doing everything she in her power to get a rapist off of a 12-year-old girl yeah. 
who's yeah. been and how old was he? He was in his thirties, right? He was forty one. The girl was 41. twelve. Hillary was a twenty seven year old newly minted lawyer. She was working, I believe, at a legal aid clinic. This was her first and maybe only big criminal trial, and she's bragging about it to this reporter about how she got him off. She talks about very weird, irregular practices of taking evidence out of state to Brooklyn to find an expert to uh, take a, it's kind of an involved thing we can go into, but it's very irregular if it's true. It may not even be true. And then meanwhile, the whole court order, I, I ran it by a, a friend of mine who's a retired detective, John Work, who just said in all of his experience, he'd never imagined a prosecutor taking this kind of a plea where you've got hospital, you've got witnesses, you've got all kinds of of evidence that this took place, why it went down to an unlawful fondling when the victim is been, you know, has to go to the hospital is a mystery the press doesn't want to solve. But I think the important point here is her bragging about it in the 1980s on tape, what it says about who she is. Very inhuman, uncaring, and a hypocrite because who is Hillary Clinton to women? The champion of women and children. That's who she's told us she is for the past 30, 40 years. This is a child, a woman, a, a rape, a child that she did everything she could to get the rapist off. And that woman has had a terrible life. She only last month came out in an interview with the uh, Daily Mail with the reporter who broke this story, Alana Goodman, um, under her own name. So for 40 years, she has been hiding her identity as best she could because it was such a trauma. And indeed, she never well, had she children. Was, her, char her character was impugned. Hillary yes. painted her as a little Lolita uh, yes. uh, and blamed her, blamed her. Uh, for the, I mean, the whole thing is so absurd, and and I think it goes farther. I, I, you know, I, I understand that you that, that you want to focus on one thing, but I think you have to also focus on the lack of integrity and the win at all costs, win at all costs, at win any at cost, costs, even if it's of Hillary off. Clinton. Yeah, in the way. Yeah, it is. It's win and, at all costs. And then, and then, just to add the Clintonian icing to the case, when the Daily, uh, the Free Beacon, got this information out of the University of Arkansas archive where the audio tape was was archived, they were then banned from research at the University of Arkansas Library. That's, and indeed, that's right. I remember that. He's a Clinton donor, so I mean, it's just you know, on top. That's sort of the farce on top of the tragedy. But well, it, it, it's well, an amazing well, thing. So here's the question: What what what, what hasn't been unearthed, right? Because the free right. beacon's no longer allowed access to look at files and stuff. I mean, what right. what else is in there that uh, nobody wants to uncover because it impugns? But this is the same woman who was banned from the Nixon investigation because she lacked the moral clarity or the ethical integrity. Uh, clarity, yes. integrity to uh, to to be on that uh, committee or whatever. I, I, yes. you know it. it it's a great video. By the way, it's only a few minutes. I've also linked it up on um, my Facebook page along with Diana's page as well. So if you go to my Facebook page, you'll find everything, including yes, Diana good. and this video. Uh, it, it's astonishing. She laughs. I, I think she's improved her laugh over the years because the laugh about, um, about Gaddafi being dragged through the streets, sodomized and tortured is actually heartier than the laugh that she had about the, the young girl who was tortured and raped uh, beyond repair. Well, that's an interesting comparison. But yes, I, I think that what has not changed is, is the, uh, the, the depravity. Well, in her mind, they're both the irredeemable. Character. They're irredeemable and it's, you know, run roughshod over all humanity. I mean, this is the character that we would expect in a dictator, in the great, I mean, seriously, I mean, that, you know, she's not, it's a different time, it's a different context, but this kind of, this coldness, I mean, particularly to a 12-year-old girl, is just right. chilling. And, and that's, I think, where we, we miss that aspect. Of course, we did see that repeat in the 90s, at least, but certainly leading up to this, with the bimbo eruptions. Remember? Yes, exactly. Clinton's women that he yeah, it's win at all costs. Over. 
you, yeah. you, you demonize, you smear, you destroy them to protect him. And this is something that she's been an enabler on. She's been part and parcel. She's enabled his behavior by not standing up and saying no to it, by not walking out, by not admitting what was going on. I mean, all these things, just terrible, terrible codependent behavior. And it's the same thing because these are also human beings. These women are human beings. You know, Juanita brought Not to her. Raped. It's a human being. It's the same pattern. Not to her. Not to her. She she put she Either put them in me. the deplorable, irredeemable right. basket, and they're exactly. no longer human beings to her. All right, I've got to go. Diana West, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, you can go to.